Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Good your weekend. Oh, no. How are we doing? That, weekend wasn't that good. Jenny. I am so proud of my man, Shannon Sharp. <laughs> he actually showed up today, and I predicted to my wife, Ernestine, he won't be there today. I'll be debating myself about your man, LeBron James. <laughs> I, I want to come in and show support for Aaron Rodgers. Do you? Oh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I love how you said, you know, the weekend, it just wasn't so good. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why. Is it maybe because uh, LeBron came back and we need to talk about it? Right yeah. now, the Lakers fell 121 to 114 to the Raptors at home last night to drop to 0 2 since LeBron returned on Friday. LeBron missed the final six minutes of the game due to ankle soreness. And after the game, LeBron said nothing matters unless he is 100% and also criticized the play-in game format for the playoffs, saying whoever came up with it should be fired. The Lakers now face five straight playoff teams, starting with the Nuggets tonight. Shannon, I got to ask you, how much trouble are the Lakers in? Are your Lakers in? They're in real trouble, and it's very, very concerning. Really? Um, You're all the way to real trouble? Yeah, they're in real trouble, Skip. Um, You know, you watch what they did last night, and you watch what they did on Friday night. They're not playing any defense. They gave up 72 points to a Toronto team, minus Gary Trent Jr., minus Fred Van Fleet. Now, obviously, the two of their better players were there, and they let them go bonkers. Uh, Pascal Siakam and Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry couldn't miss from the three-point line last night. But it's... Skip, the problem that I've had with the Lakers all year, and I've voiced this on several occasions, they have these long droughts in which they don't score any points. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they put a, 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 on the screen last night a stat up where they had gone had three two-plus-minute scoring droughts. And we see that. They go three. They'll go five, sometimes even six minutes, and not score the basketball. That's fine if you're locking people down on the other end. And how do you go from a 12-point lead To down 13 at the half is because you start playing defense, you start turning the football over. And then these guys are. Or the basketball, either way. Yeah, you were. Well, that's the thing, Skip. They don't score the basketball, they don't play defense, they turn it over, so they compounded a problem. By the way, Toronto scored 40 in the second quarter. 40. Mm. A 40 piece. Okay. Against that team. Skip, look. I think everybody can see LeBron is not even close to 100%. We see the way he's getting up and down the court. We see the things that he was doing before the injury, and we see the things that he can't do now. This is where he is. This is what it's going to be. I don't know if he'll be a, you know, even 75 80% by the time the playoffs start. But what was concerning is that he left the ball game and he didn't come back last night because of soreness. Is he going to play back-to-back, Skip? That remains to be seen. I guess when he wake up, how does it feel in the morning, Skip? But it's very concerning. What's most concerning about me is AD. AD was shooting 53% before he left. He's shooting 39%. AD can't play the amount of minutes that he's playing and give us 12 points. Mm. He can't do it, Skip. He can't play the amount of minutes and give us five, six rebounds. He can't do it, Skip. The whole purpose of bringing AD was not only to help win a championship right now, but when LeBron leaves, AD was going to be the next guy in line for the mantle. And that's normally how it goes, Skip. You have Kareem, and then you transition to Magic. They had the law there. You had Shaq. You transition to Kobe. Normally, that's how they do it. But for whatever reason, AD has not come back with what I thought. He, and I, I get it. Yeah, it's, it's going to take him a little to a little while. But AD, the, the shots... It's just not he's just not falling for it. Mm. And he's getting frustrated. He's missing free throws. He's missing easy shots right around the rim. But Skip, they're in trouble. The problem that I have with everybody talking about the play-in game, I heard no one, no one mentioned the play-in at the start of the season. No one mentioned the play-in when they was in first, second, or third place. It's now that everybody's starting to fall, and the play-in seems like a real possibility. Now all of a sudden the play-in game is a problem. Mm. But let me tell you what happened. Y'all look. You said you wanted to come back after Dr. King holiday. The NBA says, well, guys, we're going to lose like a billion dollars if we don't come back sooner. He's like, well, I need my check. So what do you expect was going to happen? 71 days afterward, you play 72 games in a condensed schedule. NBA said, we got to recoup some of that money, so we'll have two play-ins. Mm. I believe moving forward, you're going to have a playing game. You might not have 9-10, but you're probably going to have, what, what, 7-8, 8-9 mm. as a play-in game, Skip. 
So for me, the Lakers are in trouble. They're not defending. And AD, their best, their best player is injured. He can't rehab. Re- rehab is over. He's going to have to rehab on the court. And the second best player has not lived up to expectations since he's returned from injury. Mm. Okay, it is now my turn. It seems like it was just a couple of weeks ago that LeBron James tweeted, a storm is coming. Yeah. And it is now raining cats and dogs on the Lakers inside Staples oh, no. Center. Yeah. There's right? a leak in Staples. There's, There's a, a big leak <laughs> because your team, the Lakers, the team that plays upstairs at Staples, has fallen to 17 and 15 at home. 17 and 15 losses mm-hmm. at home. Meanwhile, the team in the basement, the Clippers, 24 and 9 at Staples. So I would say that's big advantage. Rondo's new team, right? Yep. Okay. Also, I had some issue yesterday. I just got to get this off my chest with LeBron James. It was late yesterday morning. He's tweeting. Can anybody help me if we could see this tweet? Can anybody help me find a gaming chair? Who makes the best, most comfortable gaming chair? I need one for myself. LeBron, you got a game tonight, as in game, real game, not gaming. You got a game. Well, you might not want to sit in it for the games, Skip. Oh, maybe that was it because yeah. I tweeted that. Maybe he could find a gaming chair with an enhanced clutch gene on it because that could help him because he needs one right now. So let's step back and look at what just happened in two straight home games in which LeBron returned. Again, he returned with his two other co-stars, Anthony Davis and your newest co-star, who actually played pretty well last night. Kareem Abdul Drummond, the big penguin. He put up some pretty good numbers. Yet it was Kyle Kuzma after the game last night who was campaigning for Mark Gasol to get more minutes because I think they're all seeing that the big penguin just sort of clogs up the lane. I think it's a bad fit. I told you going in, I first guessed this, that it's hard on LeBron and AD when you push them farther from the basket and you take away their driving lanes or their inside presence. Mm -hmm. It's hard because the big penguin just posts up and he's such a wide body it's hard for anybody else to have much presence in the lane skip with what they had what he what ad was going against against sacramento and what he was going in toronto Mm -hmm. i don't care if he has a mountain in the lane Mm -hmm. there's no excuse for the guys that he's going against for him not to dominate okay i got it and i'm with you on that and that's a fair criticism on your right. part. It's it's objective, and I appreciate your painful objectivity today and your candor about your crumbling Lakers. <laughs> you had to get that okay. in. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So what happens on Friday night? You're playing against a Sacramento that just two nights earlier had suffered the worst home loss in their history in Sacramento. They had gotten blown off their home floor by Utah, 154 to 105. Mm-hmm. And here they came, and there's no De'Aaron Fox. Zero. There's no Harrison Barnes. Mm-hmm. So you're a prohibitive favorite to win that game. Yep. And it's nip-tuck, nip-tuck. You see, in both games, it looked like you would assert yourself and take over. Even last night, you had a 10-point lead, what, late first quarter? Mm-hmm. And it just seemed like, here you go, here right. you go, mm-hmm. and there you went. Right. So if we could see what happens down the stretch of the game against Sacramento, you, th- this is the bad one. This is your worst loss, is that one. Because... With one, what was it, 117 left in the game, LeBron takes a three, they're down two. LeBron tries a three here to put them up one, and he hits nothing but air. It's an air ball, and you you just can't do that in that situation, which leads to the final, here's the air ball one more time. It's up, and it's nothing but, ooh, nothing but air. And here we go with the final possession. LeBron says, okay, I got it again. I'll shoot another three. And at least it was up. Never up, never in is the oldest cliche in basketball. He got it up and he back ironed it to win the game. They were down one. And again, you know my issue with LeBron. Why don't you just take that to the basket and get fouled? Now, it, it, just go. Just he, go. He's not, I mean, he, you can see he can't. He can't turn the corner right now without that. Do you really believe that? Yes. Skip, okay, you, well Skip, then. You're watching the game, Skip. Okay, you're watching I, the game. I, I didn't it. see that. I didn't see it. I, I'm sorry. And then he said after the Friday night game, I, I knew I wasn't going to get back to 100%. It's impossible. I don't think I will ever get back to 100% in my career. I thought his pride was more hurt than his ankle at that point because he had missed the shot to win right. the game. 
Right. Okay. But that's so, hyperbole. Yeah, I mean, the, the, he, I think he, I mean, he knows he's not going to be 100 percent this year. It's hard to be get healthy while you're playing on the injured on the injured body part. He knows that. But the, the career, I mean, hey, once the season's over with, after two or three months of rest and recovery, LeBron James will be back. But the likelihood of that happening during the course of this season is not going to happen. Okay. So the point is, we get to Sunday, and you're up against a Toronto that is 26 and 38, and I don't think they're going to even make the play-in tournament. Nope. I think they're going to miss the playoffs. I agree. Okay, and they're playing without Ananobi. They're playing without Van Vliet, and you mentioned no Gary Trent Jr. Correct. Well, that's kind of the guts of your team. It is. Except you still have an aging Kyle Lowry. Once upon a time, it looked like the Lakers were after him, and mm -hmm. the, remember at the end of the trade deadline. Right. And, of course, Siakam. And here come both of them, and they just light you up. And I've been questioning all year that the Lakers have stayed number one in defensive efficiency, and I never could figure it out. I think it's in part because they're, they don't really race it up and down, right. but so they keep their, keep their the opponents score. Yeah. points down. But last night was just sorry from start to finish because once the second quarter happened, they just looked dead. They did. They looked dead in they the water. They deep. looked flat. There are some, some of the shots that Kyle Lowry hit, Skip. You just look to the coaches like, hey, what you want me to do? I mean, he had a step back with a four-point play with a, a, a KCP. He hit one over a, a Caruso. I mean, once he got it going, and what we're seeing, Skip, when these guys get hot, we saw Jason Tatum go get 50, go get 60. We saw the kid, the youngest, what, he's the second youngest to go get a 50-10 game. He's 20 years old. Once these guys see the ball go in a couple of times, yep. it's all, you can't play no defense. You got to shut that off before it gets started because if you don't, what happened with Kyle Lowry? He's 8 of 13. He yep. couldn't miss Pascal Siakam. They let Siakam go for what, 19 in the first quarter, 16, 19 in the first quarter? Mm -hmm. Well, Skip AD got him. Skip AD is one of the better defensive players, defensive players in all the basketball. I'll give you, you that. You can't let Siakam do that. Okay, so that happens. And then, again, I don't know how much LeBron's pride is injured or his ankle is still hurt. I don't know because who knows, but but you think it's still a big problem. So you, let me ask you a question. When you watch LeBron get up and down the court, he looks normal to you. I didn't see him limping. Skip, do, I, no, no, no. If, like I said, if you got a pause, the answer is no. Because you told me, well, if I got a pause to think about if a guy gets in the Hall of Fame, the answer is no. I ask you, well, does LeBron look normal? You pause, which means no. Well, okay, I'm, go I'm ahead. trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. No, I'm trying to think, did I see any time... When he just looks slow. Does he look he, the he got, same? He had a good early and one where he, he just drove it to the right and sort of shot up, sort of running fall away off the glass. Skip, he doesn't look the same. Nobody, anybody that's watching LeBron will tell you LeBron James does not look the same today as he looked before he had that injury. Okay. So then out of nowhere, and it was shades of Luca in Dallas. We're going to talk more about Luca in a few minutes here mm -hmm. on the show. But LeBron just brings up the play-in tournament because all of a sudden – they're on the verge of it. Yes. They're, they're tied with Portland and Dallas, but they have the edge over Portland just because they beat them in the one time they played this right. year, right? Mm -hmm. So they're teetering on the play-in right. tournament, yeah. right? So he brings up whoever came up with that, you know what, needs to be fired. And so I'm thinking, who did come up with that? Well, I'm not sure whose original idea it was, but it sure worked. In the bubble last right. year, right? Mm -hmm. It was exciting in the mm -hmm. bubble. Everybody, they right. didn't just like it. They loved it. Right. So I don't know if it's the commissioner or some, I think Mark they're Cuban. Trying, they're trying to recoup the money that they lost during the okay. pandemic. And I believe moving forward, Skip, you're going to have, now I don't know if you're going to have eight, nine, I mean, what, nine, 10, I mean, if you have 10, you might have it like you had last year. Yeah. It might be a situation like they had in the bubble, Skip. I believe that's going to be the scenario going forward because guess what? That's an extra game. That's extra revenue. So they're going to try to recoup this revenue somehow. Okay. So remember a couple of weeks back, Lucas suddenly, when he realized, uh-oh, we're on the verge yes. of being in the play-in, he blasted it. And yet his owner was a driving force behind getting it to a vote. So it goes to a vote of owners and Adam Silver. Right. And guess what the vote was? It was unanimous. Yes. So I guess LeBron thinks that every owner and the commissioner should be fired because they all voted for it. Well, I, I'm not surprised, Skip, because I said when LeBron, if I'm not mistaken, they were in second place. I said they'd be lucky to be in the play-in tournament by the time he returned. And here we, and lo and behold, here we are. 
I'm not surprised by this. I'm surprised with how poorly AD has played in his return. And I figured it would take him a game, Skip. But he doesn't look the same. I mean, you can't play. How many minutes AD played last night? AD played 33 minutes and gave you 12 points. Skip, that's Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis once had a game of 59-20. He's a walking 27, 28, 10, 11 rebound game. He plays that many minutes and only gives you 12 points? That's, that's unacceptable. We can't have that. Mm. I will give you AD. I, I am having a hard time. I'm trying to go back through my mental notebook about LeBron. I, I'm seeing him shoot all the same shots. He's shooting fallaways last night. Yeah, Skip, there are times that LeBron could just step on it and get to the rim. Having had that injury, you're out there, but you know I can't do the same thing. And it's a, it's a very humbling feeling. It's not a very good feeling to know all they see is 84 and sharp on the back of that jersey. Mm. All everyone sees is Lakers with James on the back of that jersey. And knowing I can't put my foot in the dirt and do what I normally do. Knowing that he can't put his foot on that court and turn the corner and elevate and do all the things. Yeah, he's shooting jump shots, Skip. But LeBron James, they can't guard LeBron. Look who they had to guard LeBron. Mm. They can't guard LeBron. Before LeBron got hurt, LeBron would have did did whatever he wanted to do. Mm. But he can't do that anymore. He knows that. But no one cares because if they see you out there, they expect you to give them that same level of greatness that you've bestowed upon them for 18 years. Mm. So remember Kevin Durant, excuse me, missed 23 games, Mm -hmm. came back against the Pelicans and goes five of five from the field Mm -hmm. and two of two from three and five of five from the free throw line for 17 points. 17, seven and five against in a big win over the Pelicans. And he looked like he'd never missed a drill. But his game is totally different than LeBron. Kevin Durant is not looking to put the ball on the court, the floor and get to the basket. That's not what Kevin Durant game is. Sometimes he does. But that's not... His game is predicated. K- KD is going to heavy pull up. KD is going uh, to get to the mid range and pull up. KD is really not getting. LeBron is getting to the rim. LeBron has the fifth or sixth highest uh, percentage in the paint because he spends so much time there. That's not their games are totally, totally different. So KD is going to be less less affected by injury on the lower half than what LeBron is. That's LeBron. If LeBron was the shooter, Steph Curry, okay, fine. Steph Curry could have an injury on his lower body. And he will be fine because his game is not about driving and shooting. It's about handles and getting the shot up. Mm. KD is the exact same way. So KD is going to be less affected by the injury uh, that, that's on the bottom than a LeBron James. So KD coming off his hamstring issue, and it seemed like it was torn, like it was a serious one. He just went back-to-back 42-point games, mm-hmm. and LeBron missed 20 games, only 20, uh, 23 for Kevin, 20 for LeBron, and now it looks like LeBron could be out again, right? Yeah, I, I, I think it's very, it's highly unlikely that he plays tonight against okay. the Nuggets. All right, so here come the Nuggets, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen? They lost Jamal Murray, and they have won nine of their last ten because that little kid, he's not a kid, he's 30 years old, that Compazzo from Argentina has become the catalyst point guard that they did not no, have. No, because that MVP has been the MVP. No. Nikola Jokic, which I told you is oh, the MVP, oh. and Michael Porter Jr. Remember? Every time I look up, Michael Porter Jr. makes another shot. He, he, and every time I look up, Aaron Gordon makes another shot. I, I, Aaron, Gordon, Aaron Gordon has been okay, but Skip, Michael Porter Jr., and I said it last year, watching him in the bubble, I said, man, if this kid put on like five or six pounds, Skip, Skip, he's KD. Mm. He got range like KD, Skip, he's six foot ten. He can shoot, and he has no conscience. Mm. He don't care what the shot clock is, Skip. He'll pull up from 28, deep corner, top of the key, and he can put the ball on the floor and he can finish. You are underestimating what Compazzo has done for that team. Not, He's like a Rondo character for yeah. them. Did you see Compazzo throw the ball mm-hmm. behind his back and turn it over? Well, Did you I, see I Mark saw him against the Pelicans go 19, 6 rebounds and 10 assists. That's what I saw. So what is I don't know. Maybe I don't watch enough. So what is Jokic giving you? Jokic has been steady all year. Hadn't missed a game all year. No, no, no. no. So, that. So, by default, I got to give you MVP by default. So the man is 20. The man is uh, the only player in the top five in all in the category, point scoring and rebounding. And you talk about just because he's not missed a game, that's why he's going to win the MVP. Hey, I saw the guy who is the most valuable, Embiid, last night against my Spurs. 
just tore them apart. Skip, did you see? I'll, I'll take Embiid any day or any night over did Jokic. You see what Jokic did? You. did you see what Jokic did to mm -hmm. your team? Mm -hmm. He was very good, but Michael Porter Jr. was the guy who made every <laughs> Every time I looked up, he made another shot. Every time I looked up, Aaron Gordon made another shot. It was those two who killed my team. My team played great. Rondo played. He took over the fourth quarter, and even he wasn't enough to overcome their shot making. Exactly. Yoke. Because mm -hmm. they they you got to file him. They got so nobody big you, enough to you, deal with it. You've him. got Denver tonight. Then yeah. you've got said Clippers on Thursday night. Is LeBron going to duck that game also or not? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's more likely that he misses tonight. And that gives him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, plays Thursday. And then again, Skip, they got Friday night against Portland. you got to go to Portland. Yeah. No bargain. Then you got Phoenix on Sunday. That's it, really no bargain. Right. Then you got this team called the Knicks. Who knew? They've won nine of ten. Mm -hmm. And they come to L.A. the next Tuesday. Then you get an easy one, maybe against the Rockets, but you never know. They can, all of a sudden. There are no, the Lakers, Skip, the Lakers, they have no easy game. At they, Indiana and at New Orleans to finish. Yikes. Yeah. They go, Woo. They better hope they stay in the play in. Yes. Because they can I easily agree. they can easily fall out of the play out. They could be out in the play out. LeBron, I need you. Come on. Suck it up and go. He's going. He's giving you, you He's giving you everything he's got. But that's that that's all he has. Mm. That's all he has. Mm. Well, as the great Tech Shram once said about the Dallas Cowboys, everybody wants to see us lose, but no one wants us to go away. I don't want LeBron to go away, as in miss the playoffs. Hey. It is what it is. I, 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 I'm looking at a guy having had that injury, and I know what it looks like. I look, and I, I feel, I feel bad because it's because you're asked to perform at an elite level, and your body just won't let you do it. Mm. And you have Poor no wiggle LeBron. room. Yeah, none, you're just none. expected to come back yeah. and be as dominant as you were before. Yeah, if you're, the, LeBron, if you're the number one or two seed, Skip, so what, you fall to the four or five. Mm. There's no wiggle room. And he said, you know, we don't know if he'll play tonight, but he said the most important thing for me is to be healthy and at full strength when it really matters. So obviously he would like to get back to that as well. No mercy. Well, let's wrap up the draft here. The Cowboys were able to trade down and still focus on fixing their poorly ranked defense in the draft. Eight of their 11 draft picks were on the defensive side of the ball, including their first six picks. Pro Football Focus gave the Cowboys a B grade for their draft. So, Shannon, I would like your grade. Please give the Cowboys Please. a letter grade for me. Skip, I gave a B plus. Hmm. Um, because I told you I, I like the Michael Parsons. I started as a skip. Yeah. If this kid falls Great. to him, he has the potential. I believe from the defensive perspective, he has the opportunity to be what Kyle Pitts is on the offensive side of the football, Skip. Big, fast. His, you, his, you weren't talking about him falling to Dallas. You were just talking about him in general. Yeah, I was just saying, because yeah, they, they, right. I was expecting Dallas to stay at stand pat. Mm -hmm. I thought they would get him at the 10 spot. You was wanting him to get a quarterback, Patrick Sertain II. I said, Skip, if they get an opportunity to get this kid, whew, because he can be special. Now, what it tells me... <laughs> Now, two years ago, they had Rod Marinelli and Chris Richard. Oh, I bet they tell me they're old school. You can't be playing that defense. So to get rid of those two guys, Chris Richard, Rod Marinelli, they brought the brunt of it. Last year, Mike Nolan's defense is too complicated. They terrible. He terrible. They need to get rid of him. Lo and behold, I'm looking at what Jerry Jones did. He's telling me, nah, guys. Now y'all don't escape. Go to three defensive coordinators. I'm putting my veterans, them guys that's making a lot of money, D-Law, uh, a Wolf Hunter, Jalen Smith, all you guys, you don't notice because the first six picks, picks went on the defensive side of football. Eight of the 11, mm. Skip, you don't make eight of 11 picks on the side of the football and you believe that you have the personnel already in place to get it done. Part, you got a, a linebacker, a cornerback, a DT, an edge rusher, a cornerback, linebacker. Lo and behold, all the big dollar guys. That's what they got linebacker. You got two guys making big money. You got a D tackle. You got an edge rusher making money. Mm. Jerry said, nah, we ain't good enough there. Mm. Hey, we need to fix it. You don't notice. Guess what? Uh, Dan Quinn ain't going nowhere. Dan Quinn ain't going to be here for a minute. Skip, I like what they did because I believe they addressed the most important need. I understand that you like, if Kyle Pitts fall, okay, I would have gotten that. But the way, they, the, the way the draft set up for them, they were able to move back get an extra third-round pick, and get Michael Parson, who I believe is the best defensive player in this draft, and you get a corner, you need a corner. The cornerback had a first-round grade on him. 
but he had some character issues, which Jerry doesn't have a problem with. Both of the guys had a little, little character problem, Skip. But that ain't no problem for Jerry. You know how Jerry is. Jerry like him a little bad boy here and there. He believes that's what it takes to win football games. So I gave them a B plus. They addressed the most important need, the defensive side of the football. I like what they've done. Now let's see. I would have given them an A. Because, Skip, I like to compare up free agency and the draft because all, it's a combination because you get an opportunity to fill some needs early knowing that you're going to address some more needs late in the draft. Mm -hmm. But had they done anything substantial in the draft, in, in free agency, Skip, I would have given them A. But I gave them a B plus because I like what they did. They addressed the need. Defense was their issue. Mm -hmm. They they seem to have addressed it. Addressed it. Let's see. Because they, they normally hit, Skip. Give the Cowboys credit. You say what you want to say. But normally their draft picks, they normally pan out very well. Let's see if they can keep it going. Mm. Shannon Sharp, the Hall of Famer, gives my Dallas Cowboys a B plus a B in plus. the draft. Gave a B plus. B plus. And me, lifetime Cowboy fan since the age of 10, <laughs> I give my Dallas Cowboys a C minus. <laughs> what? I was extremely disappointed by the outcome of the draft, given the fact that they went into it looking for cornerbacks and safeties. We are so unsafe at safety. You got one. <sighs> you got three corners. That's all we got. Okay, so let's step back from this and see what just happened. Okay. So I told you, Patrick Sertan is textbook, perennial, Pro Bowl corner, like father, like son. He's everything that I love in a cornerback and a football player and somebody I can trust as a cornerstone of my franchise. He's already very mature for his age because his father was his <laughs> teacher and his coach. And his father was a Pro Bowl cornerback for the yep. Miami Dolphins. And you played against played him against occasionally. Him. Yep. And it was on a silver platter, and your Denver Broncos swiped him <laughs> at nine right out from under us. But the problem was that, thanks to Dan Quinn, I think they were already targeting J.C. Horn, who went eighth. Eight. So actually... The Carolina Panthers had saved Dan Quinn from himself at eight by taking the player I believe they had targeted. Mm -hmm. And I'll take Patrick Sertan over J.C. Horn any day, night, or week. Okay. And we'll see how that plays out. Right. But remember, Dan Quinn is best friends with Will Muschamp, right. who was the coach at South Carolina for a little while last year until they fell apart at two and five and he got fired at midseason. Right. Dan Quinn went 0-5 last year as the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, and he got fired at mid not even to mid-season, <laughs> of the NFL season, thanks to losing to Dallas 40-39 to when they were ahead 29-10 to at halftime. And Dan Quinn oversaw the fifth worst pass defense in the history of the National Football League. And now it appears to me... He's your D coordinator now. Not only is my D, <laughs> my, he, he my D coordinator, I think he's now my unofficial new head coach. I believe that Dan Quinn ran this draft from start to finish. And by the way, did you see what the new characteristic was with every player they picked? Arm length. Everything was about <laughs> arm length. So if you can tell me that my defense is soon to be nicknamed the long arm of the law, <laughs> you got me. You got me. But what does arm length exactly have to do? See, he's stuck with he, he looks back on what he had, the Legion of Boom, that he inherited. Right. It wasn't like he picked those players. Exactly. But he had Richard Sherman. And he had Cam Chancellor, so, Brandon Brown. And, and Brandon the, Brown. And they're, they're long corners. Right. They're they're tallish. Yes. They're not gigantically right. tall, but they're long yeah. arm corners. And somehow, yeah, they could also play football. Right. You know, like they right. had great instincts. Right. Richard Sherman is a gifted football right. player. Right. You know it, yeah. and I know it. Yeah. He has a nose for the ball, ball hawk, right. and he has great instincts. And they were in the perfect system, and he had two of the best safeties in the history of the league behind <laughs> it. Okay, I get that. But don't tell me that arm length is going to suddenly turn my defense around. And seriously, if you look at every one of these, they're long, tall. Every, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about everybody they picked has long arms. Well, great. Okay, so let's get back to Micah Parsons. So they take him 12th overall. And, and again, I told you, I watched him a lot. Number 11, he <laughs> leaped off my screen. He opted out last year. Right. But I watched him two years ago at Penn State. He was everywhere wreaking havoc. They didn't ask him to play any kind of scheme. He just saw ball, attack ball. That's just what play football, son. That's, that's <laughs> what he did. So the point is, he, he dropped 
because he has some character issues. I got it. Yeah. He also, I saw, I watched his whole introductory press session. Mm -hmm. He's got ego issues. And let me tell you that what scares me to death, <laughs> I know Dallas, Texas. I lived there a long time and I wrote three books on the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> it can be sin city yeah. for young Dallas Cowboys who suddenly get paid and they're runaway egos because everybody out there wants to be your best friend. You know how it goes. Everybody wants to buy you drinks or buy you this or buy you that. And suddenly you go down the wrong road to hell, right? <laughs> so I worry about players like this who get their money and suddenly they have a whole rest of the offseason to get ready for. I'm a star in Dallas. Well, you haven't proven anything yet. Because that's his favorite. That was his dad's favorite team. He okay. wanted to be a cowboy skill. Okay, so... The great Mel Kuyper, just a quick point on him. So he loved the pick of Rashawn Slater, who went the next pick to the Chargers. Right. Obviously, you could argue he might have been the best as Panay Sewell or him right. as, as the left tackle. Right. Okay. Well, Mel Charger gave one A grade to two teams, to Miami and to the Chargers. Why was that? Because of Rashawn Slater. Again, it was a need pick for them right. to protect Justin Herbert. Yep. But also, we go to round two. My team is sitting, I think, on Trevon Merrick, and he's the safety I watched a lot at TCU because it's a Big 12 team. Right. I watched him play my Sooners. He's just a stud. He, he just knows Thorpe how to play. Did, What's he win, that? did he win the Thorpe Award? I think he did. I think he did. I think he did. Yeah. Well, he just every time I watched him, I said, that kid can play. Smart, tough, hitter, just all over the field. Every time you looked up, he was in the middle of the action. Right. He is sitting there for Dallas. Dallas is about to pick 44th, and at 43, guess who? The Raiders go up and snatch him. Way to go, Mike Mayock, or maybe it was Gruden. I don't know which one, but they <laughs> went up and snatched him right out from under us, just like Patrick Sertan was snatched out from under us. And it leaves us with Kelvin Joseph. Okay, what is Kelvin Joseph known for so far? Well, he was at LSU for a while, and then he got suspended before their bowl game. He didn't like the way he was treated, and he took a year off and went to Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And he had a pretty good year because he can run. Yeah. He ran 4-3, 4-3-4. Uh, off the field, he's also been very successful so far because he's made already six rap albums. How do you make six <laughs> at this age? He's made six uh. under the the name Boss Man Fat. His nickname as a kid was Fat, so he became Boss Man Fat. I like it. I'm good with it. Okay. But once again, you have some ego issues going on here, and some teams shied away because he's a talented kid who's really full of himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I love that in Dallas, Texas, Sin City? I don't. And yet, who did I love? I, I don't even know if I brought this up on the show, but I, I love bloodline corners. Mm -hmm. And I love Asante Samuel Jr. Yeah. Obviously, senior played for the Patriots and was pretty, pretty went great. Went to Super Bowls and went yeah. to the Pro Bowl. He yeah. did pretty well. Mm -hmm. Three picks later, guess who goes to the Los Angeles Chargers again? Asante Samuel Jr. So now I'm going to be waiting over the next five, six, ten years to see which of these corners shows up and shows out. Right. My money would be on Asante Samuel Jr. I would have taken him because he's just more trustworthy mm -hmm. because of bloodlines. This kid can play. I, I saw a couple of Kentucky games last year where he I, I noticed him. Right. But I just don't know. And yet, they say he's got long arms. Is that it? I, I don't know. Skip, you, look, Skip, if you take your child to the store, you say you can get some candy. If they out of that candy, you can't let the kid cry about the Get something else okay. and let's move it okay. along. Okay, you, but, so we don't get, some... get Trevon Merrick and we don't get Asante <laughs> Samuel. So right in the middle, we take Kelvin Joseph. And, and he was a value pick. Uh, yes. Kuiper had him ranked 67th. He went 64th. So, right. so I'll, I'll, whatever. I, I'll give you that on talent. But then we get to the third round. I believe my Dallas Cowboys made the worst three third round picks in the history of the National Football League draft because they did have three. Right. One of them courtesy of Philadelphia because they did trade back to get your man Micah Parsons, yeah. right? Yes. They, they had an extra three. And I'm sitting here looking at these, and I can't make heads or tails of why they took them, except they have long arms. So the long arm so, of the law. So in other words, you would have preferred them. They had three third rounders. Take two of those, package them, and move up and get somebody. Somebody. Get that safety. Something. Get the safety. That's okay. what you wanted, the safety from TCU. Okay, so they take the kid from UCLA, the defensive tackle, Osa Odigi Zua. And... <laughs> He's, uh -oh. a, he's a high motor, high energy overachiever, and I just don't love those. But he's got long arms, so I'm. That, that's why Dan Quincy, I gotta have those long arms. Then this is the one that just slayed me. Chauncey Goldson goes next. He's out of Iowa. He was the 84th pick, and he didn't make Mel Kuyper's top 150. And I'm like, what? 
So I'm an Oklahoma fan. I watch every snap that Oklahoma plays, mm -hmm. and Ronnie Perkins can just flat out rush the passer. Right. He's smaller. He's a little undersized. Right. But guess who snatched him up a few picks later? Bill Belichick. You watch what he does for that defense. Right. They'll put him. You have to stand him up on the edge, yeah. and here he'll come, and he'll be yet another one of those edge right. rushers that they they seem to right. grow on trees up there. But see, Skip, that's not really Dan. Dan likes his he, uh, his DM with the hand in the dirt. If you look at Cliff Avery, okay. you look at right. Bennett, you look at those guys. He preferred to have their hand in the dirt, okay. and so Coach Coach Belichick is going to use him in the way he would use at Oklahoma. He had his hand okay. up a lot. Okay, so Chauncey Goldston was the Philly pick. So that's yes. your, your gravy pick that you got for moving back a couple of places to take right. Micah Parsons. Right. And I think you just wasted it because I don't see it. I don't see how he's going to contribute. All he is is bigger with longer arms. So I'll give you that. Then they have another third-round pick, and it's Nashawn Wright out of Oregon State, a corner. And, and he's okay, but again, I'm, I'm reading Lance Zerline, who I have great respect for in NFL.com, and, and he says... He, he's he's tall, but he can't run. And he 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 timed okay. He timed four four six. But hey, that's pretty but, good. That's good. Check this out. He's the 99th overall pick. ESPN scouts Inc. had him ranked 272nd of draft. What? what what are you taking him for? Just because he's six four? Okay, I'll give that's, you six four. That's really four. tall for a corner. Okay, I I got that, it. That so he ginormous. thinks he thinks I got Brandon Browner. Well, Brandon Browner was just nasty. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, he yeah. was just. Well, yeah, Brandon, but see, the thing was with Browner, if he missed at the line of scrimmage, it was over. Okay. Then once, he, he worked better in the red zone, Skip, because there was a lot less space to operate in. And a big kid like this that has to turn and run, mm. Skip, I, I, six, four, that's, people don't realize, that's, that, that's a point, that's big for a corner. Unless he got really, really loose hips, and I don't know. But, I, but Skip, they are, he's got really long arms. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Skip. You guys had issues yep. on the defensive side of the yep. football. Okay. They, they believe they've addressed those needs. Okay. I'm sorry that he skipped. I know you would like to have, okay, all things okay. being equal. So here's the one that was the diamond in the rough. They took Jabril Cox in the fourth round, and I couldn't believe he was still sitting there. Right. Because Jabril Cox, all you got to do, just, just turn on an LSU game last year, and he was just like Micah Parsons. He was running and hitting everything. He's taking the tight end. He's taking the back out of the backfield. I'm not sure there's a better cover linebacker in the draft than that kid. I don't know how he was still sitting there. So I'm happy. I got two. I got Micah Parsons and I got Jabril Cox. I'll take them to my bank. But they both play the same position. Right. Okay? And that position has Keanu Neal, who was the 17th overall pick just a few years back. Right. But he had an Achilles tear and an ACL. Right. And he's transitioning to linebacker. Right. And I still have Wolf Hunter. They're not going to take his fifth-year option yet. They won't give him his fifth-year option because right. they're going to make him play it out because right. he can't stay healthy. Correct. And I still got Jalen Smith. And to your point, he last year he was chicken with head cut off, just running around like he forgot how to play football. Skip, all but you, I got linebackers out there. You know what? <laughs> all you need is Michael Parson to be what I believe he can be, and this draft would be a success. Okay, do I have a safety? I got Kazee, who played for Dan Quinn in Atlanta, and I right. think he's going to be my starting safety. And Keanu Neal played for Dan Quinn, who's now my unofficial head coach and ran the whole draft. And fortunately, I got a bunch of long arms. Way to go. Skip. I know you wanted Pastor Tan, but he wasn't there. I got it. So what you wanted to take? So would you have preferred them not we to take? We just kept getting burned. We didn't get what should have been. We didn't. We got second best, third best, fourth best. Skip, nobody goes into the draft and get everybody they exactly want. Hey, we got boss man fat. That's all I know. <laughs> oh, Way to Skip, go, boss man. I don't man. know if I was expecting <laughs> this from up. you. You were fired I mean, you, up there. Hold on. The draft. Hold on. Time out. Time out. It doesn't matter what you did in the draft. You got the number one draft pick. You got Dak Prescott. You told me earlier Dak guy. Prescott was the answer to all your prayers. <laughs> oh, okay. I could feel that okay. from over that here. For $40 million a year? I yeah. I feel Thank that. I roll that to silence. That's We're what you told me. We're moving on to Aaron Rodgers. I got a lot to say. You guys got a lot to say. The drama. It continued over the weekend with reports that the quarterback wanted the Packers general manager fired. And meanwhile, team president Mark Murphy wrote on the team website, quote, we remain committed to Aaron in 2021 and beyond. Well, Matt LaFleur told reporters, quote, I can't even take my brain to that spot right now when discussing the possibility of Rodgers not being on the team. Shannon, what happens next? I believe someone's going to have to go. Um, I believe Aaron Rodgers knows. Two of the higher-ups are lying 
only Matt LaFleur realizes what, how special Aaron Rodgers is after working with him, being with him on a day-to-day. These other two guys are lying, and I believe Aaron Rodgers know they're lying. Skip, this is what I have a hard problem understanding. Now, over the, over the last couple of months, Mark Murphy has said he, Brian Gunikins, and Matt LaFleur have each taken turns to come to California from Wisconsin to visit with Aaron Rodgers to try to reassure him everything's okay. Yep. But last year when you took a quarterback, you couldn't even pick up a phone to call him. So I'm, let me get this right. Now, you, this is our guy. He's going to be our guy from 2021 and beyond. But you move up in the draft to take a quarterback, and you didn't even have the courtesy to call him. Why? Nobody believes. And Aaron Rodgers said it. He said, uh, after the season I had, I threw a wrench in somebody's program. A lot of people thought I was probably done. Who you thought he was talking about? He wasn't talking about the, the casual fan. He wasn't talking to the people in the NFL. He was talking to Mark Murphy, and he was talking to Brian Gunikis. That's who he was talking to. They believed he was done. That's why they took Jordan Love. Yep. Now, oh, we have the utmost confidence in him. He, we want this be him to be our quarterback from 2021 and beyond. No, you didn't. Because if you wanted that, you wouldn't have taken a quarterback. You wouldn't have traded up to get a quarterback. You thought Aaron Rodgers was washed. That's what you thought. Well, they did. Exactly. What, what had they just seen in the NFC Championship game at San Francisco? Yeah. We're going back a year. Even though, even though, look, think about what happened. They just, I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo threw eight passes, and they scored 44 points. They and did. They, so they got run off the field. And Aaron Rodgers threw two interceptions and had a QBR of 23 on a scale of 0 to 100, which is just pathetic. He did have, he did throw for that 338. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, that's not here, no, okay. okay. He went to the NFC, think about it now. He went to the NFC Championship game. He was 26 touchdowns with four picks. Mm-hmm. Now, he doubled, he, he almost doubled that with 48 touchdowns and four picks. Normally, if a team, if you go to the AFC Championship, uh, NFC Championship game, they're not looking to replace their quarterback. Now, this is what we know. Alex Smith knew the Chiefs weren't committed to him beyond because they traded up to get who skip? Pat Mahomes. The quarterback in, in Houston knew they weren't committed to him because they traded up to get who? Deshaun Watson. When you trade up to take a quarterback, you can say all you want because okay. it sounds good. But Aaron Rodgers know why you did what you did. So my only question is to you, Packers Brass, why is it so important for you now to fly all cross country, showing up at this man's doorstep to try to convince him when you couldn't even give him a courtesy of a phone call. You could have saved yourself all these headaches had you just reached out and said, Aaron, look, we still believe in you, but we'd like to take a quarterback in the draft. You're going to be our guy. We're going to commit to you, but we're going to take a quarterback. But you take a quarterback, and then you're like, well, hey, we don't talk about such and such a guy. We don't know all this. So Aaron is like, Skip, I believe the, the hard part about firing Gudikins is that if you fire him, you basically said Aaron Rodgers in control here. And you've done everything you could over the past two years to seize that control from that Aaron. That is correct. Now Aaron real, Aaron's like, okay, either he go or I go. Now the question, the question is, Skip, who do you have more confidence in over the next three years? Do you believe in the GM or you believe in Aaron Rodgers? I'm taking Aaron Rodgers. But I don't see how they, they work together because mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers doesn't trust him. You know, I, I, I know Aaron doesn't think he does. He knows he can't get Mark Murphy fired, but he believes he can get Brian Gunnikins get up out I, of there. I'll buy that, and that might happen. But I'm going to begin my response to Jenny's question with a tidbit, just a tidbit from our friend Lil Wayne, okay. who's obviously the <laughs> world's biggest Packer fan. He knows a lot of people sort of inside and around the Green Bay Packers. Mm-hmm. He has been hearing that they are higher than ever on Jordan Love. Don't have much to show for it because they didn't even play a preseason game last year. But this is just from practice as they got later and later in the year and Mm -hmm. he's running scout team, right? But they began to like his composure a little better, albeit just against the Green Bay defense in practice. Right. To the point they see some flashes, just flat, and I don't want to overstate this from Lil Wayne, but some flashes of Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Big arm, big arm, big talent. I don't even know him from Utah State. I did not I watch, didn't watch him, it. I so either. I don't know enough to know, but that's what Lil Wayne is hearing. Right. And, and his ear is to that ground yeah. on the frozen mm-hmm. tundra. So he's hopeful that if this goes completely south, and Aaron is out of there sooner than later, that at least they have something that that they could hold on to in Jordan Love. Well, I don't know. I mean, he is Aaron freaking Rodgers, right? right? So to your point, 
I told you they were ready to part ways a year ago yes. because his stats had declined for five straight years. They still look good, touchdowns, interceptions. I give you that. And they still went 13-3, and three, so that works. Right. But we kept saying, boy, they're, they're kind of a – you know, like a mirage of a 13 and three, right? It just didn't look legit to either one of us. And finally, they get to San Francisco and they got exposed in every way, shape and form. He did not play well, but they didn't play well and they could not stop the run, as you said. Right. Okay. So now they're ready to go. And then he throws the monkey wrench. It was the ultimate touche. <laughs> He's a unanimous runaway MVP this year. And it's just hard to argue with that until the playoffs. And they were lucky that they got the Rams with Jared Goff with a screw in his thumb. Mm -hmm. And Aaron Donald had cracked ribs and just, I couldn't even see him. I right. couldn't find him in the game. So that was a break for them. Mm -hmm. And then obviously they finally get their home <laughs> NFC championship game that Aaron had always, as he said that week, dreamed of. And he wasn't very good, especially in the fourth quarter, right. especially in that sequence, right. first and goal at the eight with 222 left. And it all blew up. And he had a QBR 68, which is not great for him in that game. And so he's now one and four in championship games. He's nine touchdowns to eight interceptions in those five championship games. And the one that he won was against Caleb Haney in place of Jay Cutler, obviously, in the second half at Chicago. And they, they went on to win the Super Bowl a long time ago. So they're saying, gee, He's hard to get along with, and he hasn't given us the bang for the buck in right. the postseason. So to me, it, it, it feels so, so ugly right now that, that I'm thinking that it's, it's going to go so far south, they're going to deal him sooner than yes, later. Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, for a while, I was thinking they'll just say, no, mm -hmm. you're our quarterback. And they may still dig in and say, you're going to be our quarterback. Well, if it comes to that, would he hold out? And the other thing is, now that he's got the Jeopardy, possibility to be a permanent host of Jeopardy. I don't think he'll get the job, but you could be right. right. Maybe he will. We'll see. I still believe he might pull a Carson Palmer. Okay, well then that would just be, I quit. I quit. Right? Yeah. So you know what I mean? It's I quit. Now look, what, what y'all gonna do? He, he does have a lot else going on in his life. He has other interests than, than obsessing with football, and he's what, 37 mm -hmm. years of age? So it wouldn't shock me if he quit. But your Denver Broncos are sitting there. I could not believe that with the ninth overall pick, the reason I didn't think they were going to take Patrick Sertan, I thought they'd just say, thank you, God, we got Justin Fields. And they didn't. With a chance to get Aaron Rodgers. Okay, because they did acquire Teddy Bridgewater, obviously, on top of Drew Locke. I, again, I'm, I respect Teddy Bridgewater. He, he's, a, he's a good player. Right. He, he will... He will give you all he's got. You're not winning a championship no, with Teddy Bridgewater. No, but, but he's but, respectable. Yes. He, he yeah. will... He, yes. He'll play. He'll give you all he's got. Yes. And, and you could, I don't know, in that division, it's a tough division. Could you could you finish 8-8 eight and eight with Teddy? Sure you could. Yeah. And the team, thanks to Patrick Sertan and others right. that they've added, it's going to be very right. good around the quarterback. And, 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 and what they're saying is true. He mentioned the, the Broncos, the 49ers, yep. and the Raiders. Yep. Now, Skip, for me... I bet Kyle Shanahan wish, man, why didn't you tell me this earlier? Because I would I would have definitely given you those two first round picks well, for he Aaron Rodgers. Well, that John Lynch said he called on draft day but, that but, afternoon and right. said, hey, what what can we talk but, about? Skip, here? You know, you, Skip, all you got is the third round pick. Now just imagine if he says, okay, I'll get what if he said, you know what? I'll well, give they'd you. already given that. Right, right. right. If he if he'd have held on to his picks and said, I'll give you 12 this year, I'll give you the number one pick the following year and a second round pick. Does Green Bay make that? But Green Bay probably wants to get him out of the NFC. Okay. That's probably how Green Bay wants to do it. I don't see them doing what the Cowboys do. Hey, Skip, you in my division. Hey, you, you want to make a deal? I got a deal for you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so the point is, what would your Broncos give up for this guy? It would be Peyton all over again. Yeah, you know, you, uh, I, given his age, Skip, I would give you a first, a second, first, and a third, given his age. Now, would you if, give two firsts? Would you give the next two years first? I might be willing to do that because I'm saying they're, they're going to be in the 20s. They're going to be in the 30s. So, yeah, I would. I would. i will give two first. You would need Aaron to have a new chip on his shoulder and to be recommitted to football at age 37 where he could give, he you, would. give you three big years. You know Aaron is, one, Aaron is a guy that wants to prove people wrong. Yeah. He would go ahead. He might throw 50 touchdowns with two picks to prove Green Bay made a mistake and to make yeah. them look bad. Well, if Lil Wayne is right, which I, I trust him implicitly when it comes to Green Bay, mm -hmm. well, then maybe it's heading for a divorce.
Maybe it's about to be yeah. done. Yeah, we've been headed for a divorce. Yeah. No, I, I know that, but but again, I, just, later, I didn't though. think they had a plan B, but it, maybe Jordan loves a better plan B than we think right now. Okay. Hmm. I just I like, like that plan Wayne's A. getting I in there. there. What's you your plan B? No, there's a reason why it's plan B, because I like A. There's a reason why I had A in front of B. I like right. that plan. I like Aaron Rodgers. Okay. okay, Wayne, appreciate it. Thank you for <laughs> doing that research, and uh, keep us posted if you hear anything else. No on. mercy. Godontic got two technicals last night on his way to getting ejected with only 31 seconds left. The Mavericks 111 to 99 loss to the Kings. Luka now has 15 technical fouls on the season, just one shy of receiving an automatic suspension. And after the game, Luka told reporters, quote, don't worry, I won't get another one. Uh, Shannon, what is going on with Luca, your guy, Luca? Scoop, uh, Skip, Luca is getting American ties because he's saying <laughs> the things that American players, hell no. <laughs> and you know, they say that when it's, they call foul on him and they say, and one. So, you know, Luca is like, you know what? I've been in America long enough. You know, let me let me get hit with the lingo and start laying it on him. And the ref told him, say, Luca, you can't say, you can't say that. And he's basically saying, Luca is feeling, like, hold on. I'm LeBron. I'm KD. I'm I'm at that level now, and I should be getting calls according to that level. Don't look at me as a third-year player. Look at me as a franchise superstar player. Franchise superstar altering players get those calls. I want to receive those calls, and I don't think I'm getting them. And so he's voicing his displeasure. Now, that last one, he did lean into the guy. I mean, Skip, he dislodged the guy from the spot. I don't know what he want with that, but I, I do think sometimes... You know, look, they can't. The game would be like four hours if they call every single foul a superstar. Every time a superstar got touched, he got foul skipped. So obviously, but Luca doesn't feel that he gets the level of treatment that say a LeBron, a KD, James Harden, or some of the or Giannis or some of these elite level players receive, and he doesn't understand why when he's putting up very similar numbers and he's a superstar mm-hmm. in the same category. So uh, he's going to have to be careful because the thing is, Skip, the more you gripe. You know, officials talk. You know what I'm saying, Skip? And they, they, they watch tape and they're like, hold on, bro. Because when you start crying wolf, that was a foul. They go back and look at the video and it's like, ain't nobody touched him. So now you make it harder on yourself and easier for them not to call fouls when there is a foul. So Luca, just take it down a notch. I get it. But I don't want you to be in a situation where you become, you know, like Rasheed Wallace and it's, as soon as you say something to you, they tee him up. Or Dwight Howard. Skip Dwight Howard can't even look at the official. They go to him and Boogie Cousins because they got Boogie. They got Boogie again the other night. Mm. So I don't want Luca to go down that path. But he just feels that as a superstar, Skip, he should get a certain level of respect that he doesn't feel he's getting right now. Mm. But he's one more take away, Skip, and he's gonna miss a game. And that's the last thing you'd want him to do when you're fighting for your playoff life. Mm. So, Shannon Sharp, you grew up loving as your favorite player, Larry Bird. <laughs> Larry Joe. And now you have fallen in love with Luca, yep. and you continue to call Luca Baby Bird. Yeah, you right? see, you see too. And I'm here to tell you that Luca is closer to Big Bird than he is <laughs> no, to Larry not. Bird. No, yes, not. Big no. Bird than Larry Bird. <laughs> because I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing the opposite of everything I loved and respected about Larry Bird. So what was happening last night? Once again, he's going one for seven from three. He is a high-volume three-point shooter, and he's a pretty terrible three-point shooter. He's now down to 35.3% for the year. That ranks 122nd of a qualified 159. So you're getting down to the the dregs of the earth, the three-point shooting. This was, I remind everybody, this was the preseason favorite for MVP in the NBA. Mm -hmm. From the free throw line, not that this pertained last night, but he's 72.8%, which is barely above LeBron. It ranks 88 of 110. Dallas is now 7-6 and six in its last 13, but worse, Dallas and the Lakers are now tied at home with 17-15 and 15 records, and they're tied in the standings, as you know, as they both try to avoid the play-in tournament that neither has any use for, and they don't have any use for it because they might be in it. Right. Okay. So here's my problem with Luka, and I know he's still a very young player and a very young man, but he did play six years of professional basketball in Europe, so he's mature, you would think, for his age. He is the whiniest crybaby in the league, and no, it's not even close. He whines after and and begs after every single call. (laughs) He He, he turns to the refs like, 
how dare you do it to me? Yeah. Like you said, that <laughs> he's arrived. How dare you do that to me? I, do you know who I am, right? Yeah. That's what I see every play, every game, until I can't watch it anymore. And his body language, when they fall behind to some Sacramento at home, they only scored 99 points at home to Sacramento. Yep. And I told you, Sacramento, just a few nights back, had suffered its worst home loss in the history of its franchise to Utah. So there's no De'Aaron Fox. There's no Harrison Barnes. So, so in this case, what are you doing scoring 99 points against Sacramento? So his frustration is past the boiling point, right? right? Because yep. it's all on his shoulders to carry them to home wins, and they fell to 17 and 15 at home. So what happened on the first one, as, as you point out, <laughs> he, he, as the referee said, the, the, the crew chief, Rodney Mott, said after the game to the pool reporter, the first technical foul was called after a correct offensive foul call. And in transition, he runs past me and he screams, hell no, and shakes his fists at me. And he says, which is, is a disrespectful response to a referee that's unsportsmanlike. And I, can you argue no. that? You just can't do that. You can't do that. That's the You can't show the official up, Skip. No. Especially if you shake your fist at him. No. Not that it's threatening, because <laughs> nobody's threatened by Luca. Right. But Okay, so then the second one, the game's completely out of hand. You've fallen down 13 to Sacramento at home. Yeah. It's 31.8 seconds left. And instead of just bouncing the ball to the referee, he throws it to the other end of the floor. And Rodney Mott, the crew chief, says... We had a timeout, and he takes the ball, and he doesn't throw it to the nearest official. He throws the ball the length of the court, which makes it an unsportsmanlike act. Well, that's not as bad as hell no and shaking your right. fist, but given what was happening at that point, they just finally said, okay, that's enough. You're gone. Skip, I you, think he wanted to be gone. Hey, well, obviously. But, Skip, you know, anytime you can't throw – they call a foul, you can't throw the ball up in the air. You can't throw the ball into the, the, to the extension. Skip, I, I saw J.J. Uh, JJ Reddick's – Spunk the ball to a guy they called a tech notice. So basically, just hand him the ball. Okay. Because in their feelings. And what, what did young Shannon Sharp often do when he was losing one on one basketball games out in the driveway to his big brother? I throw the ball in the woods. Throw it in the woods. Yeah. Where he has to go look for it or somebody <laughs> has to go look for yeah. it. And that's a technical foul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Well, my grandma would say, boy, take your, you know what, back at <laughs> to get that ball. Right. But Skip, but Lucas, Skip, you have to understand. Luca sees, and, and the way we've talking about Luca, and for the most part, Skip, I think we put Luca in the category with Giannis, with KD, and LeBron, and all these upper level guys. And he says, well, they would get those calls. Or if they did the exact same thing I did, you wouldn't call an offensive foul on them. And so he's like, well, hold on. I'm supposed to be getting preferential treatment, not deferential treatment. And so that's how he's looking at it. Now, Rick Carlisle says, I received four technical fouls this year. And they're all, all from the same all guy. From the same guy. Well, I guess CJ you need to Washington. behave yourself with, with this subject, with this teacher's in. Well, because so. he's on the short view. And for Rick, why are you getting thrown out this late in the ball game? It's over. If you wait just 30 seconds, you'll be able to go to the locker room. I, I don't I look. I, I get with Luca, but like I said, that second technical foul skip with 31 seconds. I don't know what he's trying. You know, sometimes coaches get thrown out of the ball game skip. They're trying to send a message to the team. Well, hell, you you losing by 13, 14 points with 30 seconds. The message has already been sent. Y'all y'all didn't play well tonight. Y'all gonna catch this L. But Luca's gonna have to take it down a night, skip. What I dislike the most about Luca is late in these games, especially at home. His body language toward his teammates is it's unacceptable <laughs> because everything it reeks of I, I, I don't want to be associated with you guys. It's it's just it's negative body language to a fault. If you're the leader, if you're the next Larry Bird, you you obviously have to keep your chin up and yeah. say we got a shot here, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just maybe it's young player, but he's been around enough to be better than. But that. you saw what he did the other night. Only four other players have ever done this, Skip. Had a 30-point, 20-assist, triple-double. Oscar, Magic, Russ, and now Baby Bird. And they're on the verge of being in the play-in tournament, just like LeBron's Lakers. But he's going to be in the playoffs. That's still playoffs. Play-in, playoffs. It doesn't matter. Well, they might be playing out. No, 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 no. Well, he, if he gets suspended for a game, they definitely going to be on the playoff. Mm. But he's going to have to take it down or well, not. to your point. He is now on the referee's hit list because he's tried to show him up so many times with yeah. all of his whining. Yeah. They're just saying, okay, boom, yeah. boom, boom. You can't, we'll stop that. You can't throw the ball to the end of the court. Oh. With the official standing no. right now, how you going to throw the ball? Okay. No mercy. 
Well, the 2021 NFL Draft is in the books, and despite drafting later in the first round, the Buccaneers still ended up receiving a B-minus grade from Pro Football Focus as they drafted potential Tom Brady successor, Kyle Trask. And as for the Chiefs, well, they didn't have a first-round pick after trading it away, but still ended with a B-plus grade from Pro Football Focus. So, Shannon, did the draft change your Super Bowl picks? It, it really did not, Skip. Uh, I still like the Chiefs because the Chiefs' first-round pick is a 25 year old Pro Bowl left tackle, Orlando <laughs> Brown. That's pretty good. Now, everybody else has projections. We know what Orlando Brown is. He's a two-time Pro Bowl tackle. Yep. So they did pretty good. They go into the draft, they get a center in Creed Humphrey. If I'm not mistaken, hasn't given up a sack in over two years. We see what they did in free agency, Skip. Brought Kyle Long. If he can stay healthy, he was an all-pro player. Uh, all the addition, they, Joe Tooney, they got the, uh, uh, the, the, the center from uh, the Rams. Mm -hmm. So I, li I like what they did. I, I don't think anybody does... Skip, it's just so hard to say, and that's what I tell people. I said, did you draft? He's like, oh, we got the guy. That's the guy we wanted. But until you get him in your building, Skip, and put shoulder pads on him, mm -hmm. you really don't know what you got. You hope that he gives you what he showed you on tape and what all the things that you've been scouting, but you really don't know. So for me, I'm still, I still like the Chiefs. I still like the Bucs. Um, the Bucs, you know, when they bring everybody back, they didn't have to do a whole lot. And it... They took another running back, Skip, in the third round. Although oh, they tried to tell you, Skip, they, they, they keep adding running backs. Mm -hmm. What it tells me, I love what Kansas City did. They took a linebacker also, speedy, sudden, impactful, he's smallish, but uh, he can get to the football. Uh, the Buck says, look, Skip, they black, we play with house money. For the most part, all of their guys are fairly young, with the exception of Brady, Skip. They, they do, you do realize, like, David White is like 25. Levante David is, is, is 32, but he, he's not, he doesn't have a whole lot of wear and tear on him. Mm -mm. So for them, they're like, we're playing with house money. We got guys that's probably, maybe might be special teams guys this year, Skip. Probably not going to get a whole lot of playing time. Mm -hmm. But when you pick, when you win the Super Bowl, what exactly do you need? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying, Skip, it's like, like, you do realize you saw how we finished the season. You see what our defense is doing. So they got some, they get, they, maybe they add a little depth, Kyle Trask. I mean, the only thing they talk about, they got Brady's a parent. The only thing he got like Brady is a knee brace. That's the only thing I see between the, the, the similarities between him and Tom Brady. True. I see no other similarities, but that's just me, Skip. We'll see how that pans out down the road. But I don't think anybody, I like what the Ravens have done. I like what a lot of teams have done. But until you meet these guys, until somebody kicked the butts out of the playoffs, I'm going to have to see it to believe it. Hmm. So it pains me to admit this. But I loved the Kansas City Chiefs draft. And I'll give you Orlando Brown on top of that. Because he is really good. He is. And so is Nick Bolton, who they took with their next pick, the first pick of the draft night, Nick Bolton, out of Missouri, mm -hmm. second round. I've watched him a lot. And trust me, he leaps off my screen just the way Micah Parsons did because he is a flat-out sledgehammer of a linebacker. He doesn't just hit people. He <laughs> destroys people. Mm -hmm. And smallish in height, right. six-foot-ish, right. 232-ish, but, but he's stout, and he packs as big a wallop as anybody I saw in college football. But Skip, that's what you need. The linebackers need to be smallish because they're going to be three down because most everybody's playing with three wide receivers. That is correct. So he will strike a blow. <laughs> he, he, will. He, he will impose his will on other teams. And they needed that kind of attitude and edge on defense mm -hmm. because every time I watched him, sometimes against my Vanderbilt Commodores, he just wreaked havoc mm -hmm. because when he hits you, you just stay hit, <laughs> you stay down. And so I love that pick in the second round, 26 pick in the second round, but I love this one more. I know Creed Humphrey because I'm obviously I'm a University mm -hmm. of Oklahoma fan. I know Orlando Brown real well because I'm an Oklahoma fan. Creed Humphrey started when he was a freshman. He was a state wrestling champ, and he just took over the offensive line as a freshman. And mm -hmm. I have no idea why his stock fell. You I, love I those think, guys, Skip. I think wrestled? people just talk, talk themselves out of mm -hmm. it for whatever reason. He's just a football player. He just knows how to control the middle of the line right. of scrimmage. Great hands. So that means if you wrestle, that means you've hey. got great hands and great feet. Great feet. And he had it right away as a freshman. Mm -hmm. He just jumped in with all those stud juniors and seniors mm -hmm. and took the line over. Right. Well, trust me, he's, he's going to be Patrick Mahomes' best friend right. because he's going to be the signal caller of that 
that right. unit. He's very smart. I, I couldn't believe he was sitting there and that they took him because that is a huge upgrade. And what was, Skip, was a huge liability, which they lacked very, a lot of depth last year, is going to be a strength of the Kansas City Chiefs this year. Well, it sure appears Did you look it. at what they had in free I'm agency? I'm not the biggest Tooney fan because Belichick right. made franchise tagged him and then said, I'm done. Right. You know, like, okay. And I'm not sure that you didn't overpay there, but the rest of it, mm -hmm. Orlando Brown and maybe... Like. Yeah. And so they might, they, I mean, Blight, somebody might yeah. move the guard to make, because Skip, in a situation like this, you want to get your best five players. I understand that Humphrey and Blight both play the play, yeah. uh, uh, Creed Humphrey both play the same position. But if one can play guard, I want to get my five best linemen on the field. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, the guy that opted out, the doctor that opted out is coming back, mm -hmm. uh, Car uh, Cardiff. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, Miang, he opted back in. He did. And Kyle Long, if Kyle Long, Skip, Kyle Long was special. If he can just stay healthy, now maybe this year off, a year and a half off, that he got a chance to heal his body up. Yeah. But I, what I agree it? with you. The quote unquote weakness in the Super Bowl became their strength. Yes. So I would love to see a rematch between Tampa and Kansas City. Right out here. And Mahomes would take it on the chin again. Don't do that, Brady. Skip. Don't do that. Well, uh -uh. he just will. No, no, they won't be able to get there. He have all day to throw it. Because Orlando Brown said that Patrick Mahomes is not going to be running for his life on my watch. You heard the man. Six foot eight, 335 pounds. Says that's not happening. I thought you told me that what Patrick Mahomes does best is to run for his life. No, that's what he does. Well, <laughs> you said he's, no. a, he's an escape artist. He, he loves to throw it on the run. Maybe he'll throw it between his legs. Maybe he, he'll throw it behind his back. No, no, no skill. Maybe not he'll throw it with his eyes no, closed. Not every play. If you look at the two games, yeah. he, the games that he lost, he lost to Tampa in the Super Bowl, he lost to the Raiders. Those were the most scrambled yards by a quarterback in the NFL this season. 497, 495. Yeah. So that lets you know that the, uh, the, the, the way you beat the Chiefs is to put immense pressure on the quarterback. Well, Andy Reid's like, okay, that's how y'all think y'all can beat us. Let me fortify this. Make it much more difficult and see if you can have the same level of success. I like what they've done. I like the linebacker because I think they could use some help in that. They got, uh, uh, they're going to be different. They're going to be a tough out. Baltimore got better. Cleveland. Cleveland got another, took, another, took another DB because yep. they said, you know what? In order for us to get to where we need to be, what we need to do, Skip? Yep. We need to rush Patrick Mahomes, but we need to cover. Yep. So Denzel Ward and, and Greedy Williams and all these guys, they got uh, 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 the guy from the, the cornerback mm -hmm. from uh, the Rams, Skip. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, they're, look. No, they're loaded. They believe on, in. On the, paper, they're the best in that division. They, they are. Be, they believe in to get to where they need to be. They're going to have to go through Buffalo. They're going to have to probably go through Kansas City. And they're going to have to do it with their defense. They're going to have to cover those receivers. And they're going to have to go get the quarterback. Okay. So speaking of Baltimore, I still have a lot of hope for them. And I still think Lamar will be much better next year. Yes. Those two kids they took, I like both of them, the receiver from Purdue and the one from Oklahoma State. They can both play and they can both fly. Didn't they take a receiver from Minnesota? Uh, I'm sorry, Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Rashad yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That was Minnesota first and yeah. then Oklahoma State. Yeah. Bang, bang. Yes. I think they'll, th th listen, they always draft so well. They, they do. They got him help. And obviously they got Sammy Watkins and they still have a big stud possession receiver in Mark Andrews. Right. And they still got the cherry on top right. in Hollywood going right. deep. It'll just be a little better mm -hmm. than it was. They led the league in rushing last year, so they'll balance up a little bit more, and they're going to be a factor. So I still give Kansas City the edge because now you're protecting the two-year-ago MVP much better than you protect him last right. year. But I will not bet against Tampa Bay. They, they are so loaded. I've never seen anything like it. You bet against them bringing everybody back, and they flat out brought Everybody out. Right. You thought some would want to get paid, and nobody wanted to get paid any more than Tampa would give them. Correct. And obviously, Golson uh, uh, got the uh, the tag. tag. Okay. So the point is, Chris Godwin. Got I the mean, tag. Godwin got the tag. And so the point is on Tom Brady that he he changed the culture. They they came back to play with Brady again because mm -hmm. it's just a lot of fun, and Bruce Arians is fun to play for, and so. Todd Light's done a great job of assembling the talent, and it was just cherries on top all the way down the draft. Jason. In fact, Jason Light. Yeah. I'm sorry, Todd Light. <laughs> Jason Light, but but down the draft, that they, they didn't need any draft right. picks. Seriously. And that's the thing. That's okay? the thing, Skip. When you, when you so win the I, Super Bowl, I mean, what, what, what do we get? I, I don't know Joe Tryon from Washington. Right. I didn't watch him, but watch. He'll be a rotation pass right. rusher, and he'll do a good job for them. Right. I do know Kyle Trask.
I'm not a fan. I wasn't to me, good. he's the opposite of Tom Brady. He's got all the measurables. He's got the height. He's got the arm strength. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have great feel for playing quarterback. Right. And I watched him a lot. I watched him against my Oklahoma Sooners in a bowl game. And he just, he's not that guy. Right. And I was surprised they took a flyer. Some people said they were going to take a flyer at the bottom of the first round. But they thought he would still be there. Right. But to me, I'm not a Tampa Bay fan. I'm a Brady fan. So I don't care about Kyle Trask. It's not like he's going to be a threat yeah. to Tom Brady next year or the next year. Yeah, I, I, you are even a bigger Brady, Brady fan now mm -hmm. since he said, oh, yeah, my boy Skip got my back. He did. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Highlighted my career <laughs> because that's all you need to know. Yeah. He watches Undisputed. Yeah, he does. So. And he, but Skip, he say, you my guy. How, how my guy? Like, bro, I'm trying to get this dude back. Mm. And you costed me due. So well, you need to retire. He has cost you so much <laughs> yeah. that I've built two swimming pools. And well, what happens when he retire? Well, I, we're about three years away. Nah, nah. In fact, I don't know. We might be five years away. I was away hoping he wanted to make some news. I said, you want to, you want to upstage Aaron Rodgers? Because no. Aaron, Aaron stole the draft there. You could steal it back. And he did not like that. <laughs> he did that he's, like, he's like, nah. He's like, yep. he's like if, I, if I retire, what yep. are you guys going to have to talk, talk yep. about? Yep. I said, well, Skip, go lose a lot of do. But look, Kansas City, I, it seems to me, Skip, like the teams in the AFC, Kansas City, Baltimore, Cleveland, Buffalo, it seems like they loaded up. It seems like he, they loaded up. Okay. So who are you betting on? I can't get, go get my homeboy. Okay. I can't go get my homeboy. <clears throat> well, they protected the biggest asset they have. And unlike the Cowboys... The trilogy. Yep. Yep. I, it might be a trilogy. Yep. Okay. And, trilogy and of what? Ali, uh, Ali Frazier. Really? Yep. Well, Gotti, Mickey Ward, or whatever you want, whatever trilogy you like. So you think the next two years? Well, yeah, yeah. How many times do you want Mahomes to lose a Super Bowl? Well, well, yeah, well, what kind of trilogy well, we, are we Well, we played y'all the regular season Super Bowl, yeah. so now we got one more. Okay. We got one more. This is it. Winner take all. Mm. Mm. Well, Winner take all. No mercy. Urban Meyer and the Jaguars landed Trevor Lawrence with the top pick in the draft, but it was a receiver the Jags missed on later that has Meyer just a bit hung up. The new Jags coach said that missing out on Florida receiver Kadarius Toney broke his heart when the pass catcher was selected 20th by the Giants before Jacksonville, Jacksonville's pick at 25. Urban also called Toney a, quote, human highlight reel. What a quote. Shannon, what is your reaction to Urban's comments? Well, if you wanted that bad, just move up, Skip. You had the firepower to go get it. You did. It seems like to me he wanted to take Tony and then maybe with the 33rd pick get Travis Etienne. And so, but if, if, if somebody is there, Skip, normally how it works, if somebody is there and you have the draft capital to go do it, you move that guy. Because not only is, is Tony an outstanding receiver, Skip, he's tremendous in the return game. So he gives you double the value. He can catch it. He can run it. Jet sweep, fly sweep. You know, Urban, Urban is very creative mm -hmm. in his offense. So he can get a lot of uses out of Tony. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted him that bad, you had the capital to go get him. And that's what you should have done. I don't have a problem with him saying it. Because I'm sure there are a lot of guys that teams like, man, like you said, the, the safety. You know, um, I was talking to Ozzie Newsom, who ran the, uh, the Ravens for a long mm -hmm. time. The two guys that he wanted, Gronk and Hernandez, Coach Belichick took him up right before he get right before he was supposed to. I'm like, well, hell, if you want him that bad, just move up and get him. That those are the breaks, Skip. So I don't have a problem with him saying it. But if you have the assets to go get it and you believe that player in your organization, in your on your team, give you greater value, you got to go get him. So what did the Giants do in free agency? They spent a whole lot of money on Kenny Galladay, Galladay yes. right? Yes. Okay. So the intel. The, the presumption would be, oh, well, they're not sitting on Tony right. because... Who, they got Galladay, they got Slayton, they got Shepard. They're, they're just loaded. It's like icing on a cake that's already baked, <laughs> yeah. right? Yep. And yet, to Gettleman's credit, he, he traded back. He went all the way back from 11 to 20, and he sat on a receiver from Florida. I, I was shocked he took that high. Mm -hmm. But it counted to me when Urban went public with, he's a human highlight. Yeah. real and that we wanted him badly because he could do a lot of things in the offense that we run. A la SEC championship game. <laughs> okay, right? Percy Harvin. Hey, yeah. Okay, yes. like against Oklahoma in the championship yes. game, Percy Harvin just killed us when Tebow killed us in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. It was a lot about Percy Harvin. Right. So he saw Percy Harvin in Kadarius, okay? So 
The, the problem here is I think it's a rookie mistake, and I have the most respect for right. Urban Meyer, but, but you just you don't, need to, you don't need to impress your interviewers by trying to explain, well, we were sitting on him because to do that just diminishes what you get in ETN right. because it, it, it that doesn't do you any good. Right. And yet he raved about ETN just the way I raved right. about him on Friday. I told you I'll take ETN slightly over Najee Harris. I have no problem with Pittsburgh taking Najee because he's much bigger and, and more powerful, right. more of a wrecking ball. But ETN is just a flat-out home run hitter. So I loved what Urban was saying about ETN right. because he's saying he's much more than a running back. Well, I tried to tell you right. that the other day because – he timed 4-4, but with a ball under his arm, he looks like he runs 4-2 to me. Yeah, yeah he, he's thick, dude. But, but Tony, Skip, Tony's special because you just want the ball in his hand, Skip. Whether they punt it to him, they kick it to him, you throw it to him, hand it to him, direct snap it to him. You, he's one of those guys, Skip, you just want the ball in his hands. So, and you know what? They're looking at him. If you remember, Skip, Tyreek Hill didn't play a whole lot of receiver early in his career. He was mainly a returner and a gadget guy until he got his route running skills up to par and he turned himself into an outstanding receiver yep. and he graduated from the return game. I can see Tony do, being a very similar type player yep. where he spends a lot of his time, Skip, being the gadget guy on offense, but he the return did. game yep. is where he flourishes and then as he gets more proficient at running routes, he, he takes off. But like you said, if you wanted him, Come on up and get it. Okay, so back to Kyle Trask to the box. <laughs> so if Kyle Trask had Kyle Pitts and Kadarius Tony. Tony, help me out. Should you have not been better than you were? Yeah, they 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 lost that game to LSU. Now ain't no harm in losing to Alabama, but there's no way they should have lost to LSU. Mm -mm. No, they should they shouldn't have lost to LSU. Okay, which brings me back to the NFC East. So now you got Tony, the human highlight reel, on top of Galladay. On top of Slayton, on top Shepherd. of Sterling Shepard, on top Saquon. of Saquon's coming back. Evan Ingram. And Kyle Rudolph this yeah. time. Whoa. Yeah. That's some firepower. And then you got the Eagles. They got Devontae. They got Jalen Reger. You mm. know, they go, they go, they got your boy Jalen Hurts. You love Jalen Hurts. Okay, but the Giants scare me. Washington scares me because I don't have Patrick Sertan and I don't have Trevon Merrick either. I don't yeah. have the safety from TCU. Washington I got should burned scare you. Twice. Everybody should scare you. Yep. You know, I'm looking at y'all. Y'all looking like a good old third-place team in the division. Yeah, but you just said my draft is a B plus, And you said we got the best defensive player in the draft. So yeah, they, I'm going with the Hall of Famer, Shannon he, Sharp. He's, he's just one guy, though. But you know Jerry going to mess it up. Now, you mm. know Jerry got to get in there. Jerry going to mess that thing up. Mm. Got a good old meal cooking. Jerry going to come in there and add something that shouldn't be there. Mess well, the whole dish speaking up. of that, we're about to talk about how Jerry is going to mess it up. See, see, he's even already you, doing it. Even you yep. know. Mm -hmm. I know. Already? Already? You already know that. Yep. Same. Okay. He well, knows. He well, knows. No mercy. Sunday on FS1, the stars of NASCAR go old school with the throwback race from Darlington. Catch some of the most iconic rides as they hit the track for the Goodyear 400. All starts Sunday at 3.30 Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. So the Cowboys traded back two spots to select linebacker Micah Parsons, who the team claimed was their top-rated defensive player. During his press conference, Mike McCarthy revealed some interesting information about how much he interacted with Parsons before the draft. Take a listen. One Zoom conversation with him that stood out for you guys. Obviously, you guys had a lot more conversations with some of the other guys. But what was it about that that you felt comfortable enough taking him aside from the tape? I I actually wasn't on the Zoom, so I can't really. Well, answer. you I, his uh, determination is uh, uh, was uh, uh, evident. Uh, Skip, <laughs> what? What? Wait, 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 wait! What does this tell you? I was watching this live, <laughs> and when that happened, I sat back and said, "Wait a second. The second-year head coach of the Dallas Cowboys was not on the Zoom interview with the player they allegedly had ranked fourth overall on their board and presumably was the first defensive player on the board yes. when they're going to go defense, defense, defense all down the draft. Correct. And you didn't participate in that interview with that player? That told me that Dan Quinn's star has risen at the star where the Cowboys are headquartered just north of Dallas, Texas. Okay. So all of a sudden, Dan Quinn, who can be 
very charismatic, has won over Jerry Jones. You know how Jerry can just fall in love. He fell in love with Kyle Pitts before the draft. I think he's fallen in love with Dan Quinn as a potential sort of co-head coach because, obviously, he was the head coach in Atlanta. They did get to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. They did blow the 28-3 to lead to Brady and company. But then things went from bad to worse in Atlanta, and Dan Quinn got fired at 0-5 last mm-hmm. year as he presided over the fifth-worst pass defense in the history of pro football. And yet his fingerprints are all over the offseason like he is running free agency and the draft. What did they do in free agency? Who were their two biggest signings in free agency? Two safeties from Atlanta that he knew, right? Mm -hmm. What was the big MO? What was the modus operandi of this draft? Is that Dan Quinn wanted every defensive player to have long arms. The long arm of the law on defense. (laughs) And every one of them led their position in arm length. Because that's the way he did it with the Legion of Boom in Mm -hmm. Seattle. Because he had long arm Richard Sherman, long arm Brandon Browner. And you can go on and on. Mm -hmm. That's what he loves. Right. Well, to me, he took over the franchise in about, what, he's been there, what, three months maybe? And I I was shocked that Mike McCarthy, I think he readily acknowledged I I wasn't on that call because he wanted the world to know uh, I'm kind of the odd man out. And there was kind of, it was uneasy up on the front. And suddenly Jerry just took over well, because, wait a second, Mike McCarthy didn't participate. Well, Skip Hell, listen to, listen to that Jerry talk. It doesn't seem like he was on the call either because he was like, uh, the, what, what, what I, what I, what I, what, uh, what yeah, I like. But, but I think he was on the call. Skip, this means nothing to me because Mike McCarthy has no say in the final 53. He has no say in the draft. He has Dan no Quinn say. And was on the call. No, uh, he's a deep, I mean, look, Mike McCarthy's on the offensive side of the football. And because he has no say. He's Skip, the head coach. He has no, Skip. I guarantee you, every other head coach that was ta- that was that drafted in the first round, they talked to the players, real offense or defense. I guarantee you, Amy, maybe, Ad- maybe not potential fifth, sixth, seventh right, rounders, right, but, but the first round, right, especially when you got the tenth overall right, pick, right. and it's coming down to J.C. Horn, Patrick Sertan, or maybe Michael Skip, Parsons. Are we surprised that Jerry, even if Jerry was on, are we surprised? Let me ask you a question. You think Amy Adams, Adam, Amy Adams, who run the Titans, she's the mm-hmm. uh, owner of the. You think she was on the call? What about Miss McCaskey, who owns the Bears? No, okay. but this is keep J- naming them. You can name exactly. all. Exactly, you, you can go know. all the way down. Skip, you can do thirty-one. Skip, you told me you did have a spent a thousand hours with Jerry. Right? I Three books, Maybe so you know, you know him. You know this is Jerry. Jerry wants to be in tr- control of everything. So I'm not surprised because he has no say. What do you think the likelihood of somebody going to be on the call for the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan's not going to be on that call? <sighs> or or, or if there's going to be a call in New England and Bill Belichick's not going to be on that call? It's, it's absurd. Thank it's you. laughable. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, it's also <laughs> laughable to me that you went out and hired Dan Quinn to take over your defense, which was all time, is the worst defense in the history of the franchise. <laughs> yeah. 308 rush yards to the Cleveland Browns right. at home. 294 to Baltimore. Yeah, and it just went on. There were three, two other. 250 to the Cardinals. And to Washington <laughs> at 220. Okay, I got all that. But suddenly, you've entrusted your whole franchise to Dan Quinn, who gave up. 40 points to you right. at Dallas. Right. The last time we right. saw Dan Quinn at Jerry World, yeah. it was game, what was it, the second game? Yeah, second game of the yeah. year. He's given up 40 points. He, he, they're up 29 to yeah. 10 at halftime, and you're giving up 40 points? Gave up 28-3 in the Super Bowl, gave yep. up a 20-point lead to Dallas, gave up a 17-point lead to the Bears, gave up a 13-point lead to Detroit. Yep. But I mean, I'll skip out. Okay. I, mean, I, I, then, I don't like bringing like up old stuff. you let him handpick Keanu Neal. <laughs> who, who's coming off Achilles and ACL tears Correct. and is transitioning from safety to linebacker. Right. And you let him handpick DeMonte Kazee, who is going to be my starting free safety, I yeah. assume. And he's making $1.5 right. million. As mom always told me, you get what you pay for, and that's what we paid for. You know, it seems to me, Skip, that when a new coach comes in, Jerry is very attentive. So basically what happened is Dan Quinn says, Jerry, the type of defense that I want to run, we don't have the personnel. You think that personnel, but look, he cut the tape on. See, I, this is not winning football. So I need this type of player. So if you don't, if you, if you want my opinion, in order for us to maximize what we have, let's go get these type of players. So not only do I get the type of player that I want, but I light a fire under the players that are already here because they've been coasting on you, Jerry. 
Okay. They've been bulljabbing well, you, Jerry. That's Jared. what he told him, and which is why Mike McCarthy <laughs> better be looking over his shoulder. No mercy. Part of Verizon's fundraising special for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Michael Vick ran the 40 in 4.72 seconds at the age of 40. Despite social media still being impressed with the former QB speed, Vick told cameras, quote, apparently, I can't run anymore. I'm just facing the music. Shannon, did you expect better than this from our guy, Michael Vick? Well, no. That's great. How, how many guys, Skip, that's in the NFL, not the, not the quarterbacks that just got drafted and working on the 40, how many guys you think right now quarterbacks in the NFL can run 4-7-2? Probably Lamar, Two. Kyler, maybe Cam. No, I don't know if Cam could But that's seven. it. I don't know. At 40 years old, that's 40 years old off of his couch. All Michael Javik has been doing is walking on the step mill doing the elliptical. You got to, <laughs> you Skip, you got to train to run the 40. Hey. 4'7 at 40 years old? Yes. Isn't that, that's got to be a world record yes. for a 40-year-old. Am I right? Yeah. You, now, guys like Willie Gall that still run competitively in their Maybe. 40s and 50s, but that's, a, that's, that's fast. So, once upon a time, John Wooten, who was then a scout for the Cowboys, told me he was at Shannon Sharp's Pro no, Day there you at go. Savannah there you State. Go. Oh, and then he no. clocked you in 4'8". So, Michael Vick oh, ran no. faster at 40 than <laughs> Shannon Sharp ran at 22. I promise you I did not run 40. That's ran, what he said. Yeah, he told me that. <laughs> well, ask Detroit. Detroit, the Jets were there, the Falcons were there, and see what I ran. Well, they should have seen, see, it, we missed out on a great prospect because, see, everybody said I was too slow. Really? And I just ran into the end on my little 4 8 cell. Really? 4 yeah. 8. Huh? I didn't run 4 8. 4 8? Sorry, I mean, I, it's just what Skip said. Here's, here's yeah, but I still keep breaking that bull job, but I did not run no 4 8. Okay, well, we will leave I'm it there. I'm about 4 6 ish. Mike, Vic, we are imp- I was impressed by you. That is it for Undisputed. We're back impressive. same time tomorrow morning. The herd is on now. Have a great day. I'm